Hello there. This is just a bite-sized peek into our comprehensive back-end development course, and I'm all about sharing snippets like this on our YouTube free of charge. So sit back and enjoy the video. But if you're interested in diving deeper, why not consider a Covalence community membership for just $25 a month? It's your golden ticket to a full stack learning experience curating all of these videos into a comprehensive course. Complete with lecture notes, reference sheets, and challenging labs that are really gonna push your learning into overdrive. But the perks don't end there. You're gonna unlock uh, the keys to our front end and our React or Mind React course as well. Not to mention you're gonna have access to live Discord support, meaning you can harass me all you want exclusively of coding events, plus professional assistance for crafting killer portfolios and resumes. Just think of it as your personal coding toolkit, ready and waiting to help you build your future. So check the description down below for a link, and remember, whether you're here for a casual browse or a deep dive, just enjoy the video. Hello, my intrepid students. We're picking up this walkthrough after learning a little bit about stored procedures. I'm going to attempt to write a couple of them here and you can code along with me. Now I have this goofy schema that I've created here. Um, I will have all these statements. So both, I have two tables, uh, two sets of batch inserts that creates a schema for some Super Smash Brothers themed content in this one that creates a table of fighters. Note that these tier lists are completely inaccurate. They're just here for some possible use cases. I wanted to come up with something where I can come up, I can make up some kind of cool, uh, state uh, queries that we can run inside of procedures. Now, again, the procedures are there to learn syntax on and for reusability, they're not here to replace anything you're learning, right? Like I can still write all the queries I want, which I might do, like I might test the query and get it working the way I want. And then I would go back to uh, wrap it in a, in a sort of procedure, then call it. But nonetheless, the creation and usage of the schema, the create tables, the inserts for them are what we will call DDL statements, AKA, I had this written down for some reason, why am I forgetting it? Data definition language statements. So for this walkthrough, look in the gravity down description or notes area down below, and I should have this inside of a code block that you can copy and paste into your workbench. So follow along with me, which I very much encourage you to do and maybe even practice a few of your your own and always use Gravity or Discord if you have questions or if you're a Catalyst student, come check us in webinar. But yes, this is the scheme I'll be using. Again, if you want to pause the video so you can run this in your workbench and then unpause so you can uh, get, once you have it all added in there and you can follow along with what we're about to do. So like I said, uh, there is also a note in the lecture notes below this video. Check it out. You're going to see me writing a specific keyword on our arguments or parameters for my stored procedures, which is the keyword IN or IN. Now, if you do not specify this keyword on your parameters, that's what it defaults to. The IN keyword specifies that this is input to be used within the query that will come from the outside and will not be returned as an output variable in any way. So when the lecture notes did not have the IN keyword, it is by default added by MySQL at the very least. I'm not sure about other SQLs. You would have to check their documentation. But I'm going to be writing the IN keyword in this walkthrough to get you all ready to understand what we're looking at. So let's uh, let's begin. So let's go ahead and do something extraordinarily simple. I would like to run a select star from, I think it was fighters. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, fighters. Let's see if that works. Select star from fighters. There we go. I have my list of fighters, their tier and the game they debuted from their name and their ID just a set of I, uh, auto incremented values here, or rather, yeah, the values right there. Okay. So I have that right here going on. Uh, I noticed that the, the table names are uppercase, but my workbench defaults to moving everything lowercase. That'll depend on your personal settings, but either way, it should work just fine. Just use a capital F if your workbench, if your MySQL server settings are case sensitive. I turned my off because I was very tired of dealing, dealing with certain issues. So yeah, there's our simple statement we're gonna start with. Select star from fighters. Wrapping this in a store procedure is insanely overkill, but for some practice, let's go ahead and do so anyway. So like we saw, we need to change our delimiter from, from a semicolon to something else, my preference being a dollar sign, dollar sign. From there, we write the keywords create procedure, I can type, and we're gonna call it select all fighters. Again, complete overkill, but good practice nonetheless. There we're gonna add our set of parentheses because that's where our parameters would go if we had any, but in our case, we do not. Remember, there are no uh, uh, curly brace syntax like we have in JavaScript. Instead, we have our begin keyword and our end keyword. 
The end keyword specifies where a stored procedure ends. We normally would end SQL statements in semicolons, but remember we switched it from semicolon to double dollar sign, hence why we put that down here. And then below, we're gonna make sure we set the semicolon back to the standard delimiter after our stored procedure creation is done. We saw uh, from my lecture notes that typically I had my drop procedure here. We'll do that later. If we edit anything for now, I'm gonna go ahead and create it as is. But I'll go ahead and indent this for some readability, even though we don't have to. So there we go. That's all this procedure is going to do. It's gonna run this select star from fighters query for us, and that is its sole goal. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all this um, and execute it specifically, and we're gonna make sure that it exists. Yes, so I got the green check mark down here. And if you're looking through your GUI, you can come find this uh, Super Smash Brothers schema in your navigator list here. If you're in Workbench or Beekeeper, you can come find it. And you'll even see a new dropdown available here called Stored Procedures that shows you all the stored procedures and also provides you a way to modify them should you need to do so, right? So you can click on this wrench icon, modify it and click apply. And that's how you do it via point and click. But we're not gonna bother with that. We're sticking right here towards uh, how to write them by hand so we can understand the syntax. And that's it, we've created it, and now all we have to do is use it, right? So we can say creation of procedure, and then the usage of procedure. So hopefully you've been following along, just find your code along with me, so let's go ahead and call it. We're gonna write call, the name of the procedure, select all fighters, I could have copied and pasted it, but whatever. And the semicolon is back to our normal line terminator, AKA our delimiter. So we can back to using our shorthands and hotkeys as we need to, and that's all there is to it. Honestly, this is enough for the walkthrough because now anything you wanna go inside between the begin and end is a custom query that you can have. I mean, go for it. Uh, just, you'll learn some nuances along the way. I'm not gonna go and do like a whole series on this. I probably deep dive them in a full DB course, but this is enough to get y'all up and running with this concept. And you should at least include one on your labs at the end of this topic. But, uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. I don't know if I even even need to include like a lab that makes you write any. I think I should. I'll give y'all like another, maybe like Instagram style set of tables and values that you can uh, create for the lab. And then I would ask you to write a couple of procedures and, sh and share with us the code of what that would look like so we can confirm they're written. But honestly, as long as they query correctly, that's all that matters. So. Uh, like I had said, we need to also take a look at, let's see, drop procedure. Okay, yeah. Uh, and like I said, if we wanted to alter this in some form or fashion, we could always do the following, which would be drop procedure, uh, if exists, name of procedure, which is select all fighters, like that. That way we can drop it if we need to, if we can modify it, right? So this, instead of having to edit our things somehow, like if I want to adjust their names, for example, fighter name, because it's select all fighters, which could just mean their fighter name, select fighter name from fighters. I can't just change that and rerun the procedure. So let me remove this. I'm going to cut this code really quickly and try and rerun this and show you what's going to happen. So you might be thinking, oh, I'm going to change the asterisk to fighter name and then rerun this code. And we're going to get an error saying the procedure already exists. That's why a lot of the times you'll see me write this additional line of code in between the delimiter and the create procedure, which uh, makes me realize that should be double dollar signs as that's currently our delimiter. Ooh, almost made a big mistake there. I would have got another syntax error. But this right here is my common way of creating a procedure, including this new line that we've added in between here, because that's what's going to allow me to highlight this and rerun it. So it drops it and recreates it, and then I can come down yonder and call it. And now notice that our edited procedure now successfully runs our new query, right? And there you go. That is all there really is to creating a procedure. Delimiter, change it. Uh, I would recommend that you add drop procedure if exists, name a procedure and your new delimiter. Create procedure, name parentheses, any parameters. Begin, whatever query ending in a semicolon, just like normal. End your new delimiter and then change the limiter back to semicolon. And then all you have to do is write the keyword call, name of the procedure, parameters, and then include any, per any arguments and their values if you need to. But even though I could completely end it here, let's actually have some fun with these. So. I'm gonna go ahead and code a few more out in this example, and you'll probably have to code similar ones on a separate uh, schema that I might give you for a mini lab or drill just for practice. Right, so 
Uh, what if we wanted to create a new fighter? So we know what an insert statement looks like, but what happens if we want to wrap it into, I don't know, into a procedure? So let's go ahead and do that. We would write delimiter, and uh, after the first one or two, I may just start copying and pasting out of laziness. Drop procedure if exists. We're going to call this add fighter, new delimiter. <laughs> create procedure. Add fighter. I can type who said I couldn't. Add fighter. Okay, there's that part. So to create a fighter, we need to have their name, a made up tier value, and a game they debuted in, right? So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to write some of our parameters out here. So just like I said in the lectures, we're going to write the name of the parameter and its data type. And in this walkthrough, we're also going to include this in keyword. Now remember, this is the default if not specified, but I want to make sure y'all are good coders and follow good practices and standards and not make assumptions that will be auto filled in because this is more explicitly written and other database developers will think you're more pro for it. So we're going to write the in keyword. This is an input parameter. So these are the default kind. It's what you're used to using in JavaScript. It's an input that informs your function how to run. This is an input value that informs this parameter how to run, and that's it. So we can call this, for example, underscore name, which is a common thing you might see. But because my column is called fighter name, I'm going to call it just name because I don't like having my parameters be the same as column names because I know that can cause some issues. So in this case, I'm just going to call it uh, name, for example. But, you know, like I said, I tend to do something like this because it helps me keep things straight in my head. And we're going to say varchar. And you know what? Let's go double check what our name or fighter name column is up here because it's going to have to be obviously a match. Otherwise, we could end up running into some trouble. So because our fighter name is a varchar50, we're going to make sure that our parameter is of the same kind. Hence why we're going to write a varchar50. This is not an arbitrary num uh, number. I'm just making sure that it matches the possible uh, column type it needs to be inserting into so I don't have a mismatch. Because if the input's too many characters, I don't want having to crash my insert by throwing an error instead. So there is our uh, first parameter, which is underscore name. Then we're going to write a comma for our next parameter, and this will be an input parameter of underscore what tier they're in, which is going to be a varchar10, which honestly, I think that I did them all a single letter, so I could have just made this a char1. I don't know why I didn't, but c'est la vie. Comma separation, and our final one in, and I believe it was debut underscore game, so I'll say underscore debut underscore game. That pre prefix underscore isn't required. It's just something that I tend to do for my input variables or parameters just so I can mentally uh, and easily understand what they are inside of a more complex query, but they're not required. So I'll make this a varchar and also 50 is what I made it. I think I, I should have looked at it up here. Yeah, varchar 50. Okay, so let's make it a varchar 50. Boom roasted and there are our three inputs. There's one input underscore name varchar 50, input parameter underscore tier varchar 10, input underscore debut underscore game parameter varchar 50. Now we need to write our begin keyword. I'm going to write my end keyword double dollar signs. I'm going to go ahead and write my delimiter part down here. You can see how I mentally begin to do this stuff here as you see my uh, cursor shift around, right? This is how I normally do things when I write these values. So I'll say insert into fighters, the following columns, fighter underscore name, tier debut game. Now you can see why I like to recommend that you add those underscores up here, because especially as newbies, you won't be wondering, is this the parameter I'm passing in called tier, or is this the column name called tier inside the fighters table? Now I think the MySQL server will be smart enough to be able to differentiate if that underscore wasn't there, but I want y'all to include it for now because it will just help you clearly see what is an input parameter I'm using dynamically versus something that's just part of a column name inside of a table, for example. So that'll just help keep things straight in your head, hopefully. So then we have to actually insert these values into our table. So I'll say value, then I'll say underscore name will be the first parameter pass into the columns, then underscore tier, then underscore debut game. So because, and, and semicolon, our, uh, our old delimiter, what, once this thing correctly runs. So like we can see, 
Uh, these underscores are a very good indicator of what they correspond to, which is my handy pen drawing tool here. Please just let me write. Cool. So underscore name, we know this parameter corresponds with the fighter column. And this parameter comes from up here because of its underscore. We can see that, right? So that's that relationship we're looking at there. Underscore tier is this parameter here. And it's also the second position because tier is the second position we are inserting in our current insert statement. Because remember, these can be in any order we want as long as these orders are correct and these orders can be in any order we want. So keep that in mind. Like order is important uh, between this insert and these column names, but not in this position up here. These can be in any order you want. This order would be important during our call process. That's where that order is important. So hopefully my random drawing on the screen actually helped and didn't actually make things worse. So that's it. This was a lot of work for an otherwise simple insert statement, but let's highlight all of our code here. Execute this bad boy. I did get a, well, I got a warning saying add fighter doesn't exist, hence why I wrote this statement here. It'll say, hey, add fighter doesn't exist, so I didn't do anything. But here's a warning. I tried, I tried to drop it, but it didn't exist. So from there, we have our create procedure uh, ready to go, and it should be fine. So let's actually call this sucker and add a character. I think, hold on. Yeah, Luigi is not in this list of characters. So let's go ahead and add Luigi. And we're going to say he is a B tier, just arbitrary. So let's go down yonder. We're going to call our procedure, call add fighter. Luigi, Luigi, uh, B tier. And we're going to say he comes from, surprise, super. You know what? We're going to say double quotes Luigi's mansion. No, I mean, it says his debut game. Ugh, his debut game wasn't Luigi's Mansion. That's just one he's known for. Super Mario Bros. There we go. So his debut game was Super Mario Brothers. Now, this sort of procedure should execute our lovely insert statement for us. So I called it, I got a green check mark, and I successfully run rows affected. I can come up here actually and call my select all fighters, scroll down to the bottom, and there's Luigi in my list of all fighters. But I could always uh, just write a quick select statement if I wanted to, to examine to see if Luigi was added there or not. But yeah, we have successfully uh, written and called an insert statement style procedure. So again, uh, this might be easier to reuse in your code base over and over and over again to save you the time of writing the insert statement with all the column names every time you need to do so. Especially when we bring this all the way back to Node Express and TypeScript, this will be a much easier call signature for your queries than you would have otherwise. So that's something important to keep in mind. All right, so let's say Luigi gets a patch that buffs him and increases some of his moves or something like that, and we're going to increase his tier from B to A. Let's say, let's say some of his uh, moves are now stronger, and he's going to go from B tier to A tier. We know that would be as simple as a update statement, but let's actually write one as a stored procedure. So for some simplicity, here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna copy the previous stored procedure code we had written because there's a lot of repetitive syntax here. I'm gonna give myself some new space to visualize it, paste it. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna nuke all the arguments really quick. I'm also going to delete everything between the begin and end, and then I'm gonna simply change its name. So we're gonna say uh, update fighter tier. I'm gonna copy this and paste it as the new name. And there we go. Let's go ahead and make this one relatively simple. So to update something, we're gonna to need to know what the fighter ID is as well as what the new tier is. So I'll say my two inputs are input the fighter ID. And again, just to be consistent, I told y'all I like to do the prefix when I'm first starting out with these. I believe those are integer types. And we're gonna say input of you know, this one will have a unique name. I call this new tier as a parameter instead of just tier. And that's a unique enough variable name to where we probably won't be confused between an existing ID and otherwise. So I call them just, yeah, because I call my columns uh, name of table underscore ID and not just ID. But the name of the tier column is just tier. So new tier is a unique enough name to where I don't have to stress about accidentally causing a conflict or just being confused. But again, if it makes y'all happy, I'll just be consistent. So the underscore is there anyway. And these are varchars 10 for some odd reason. So there we go. There's that. 
Then we're gonna write our actual update statement. Let's go ahead and do that. It was uh, update, uh, the, the caps lock update, uh, table fighters, set tier to whatever the new tier we passed in is going to be, where clause fighter underscore ID, because remember that's what I called my column name and my tables, equals the one I pass in, which is right here, copy, paste, semicolon, and guess what? We have our new stored procedure. Let me go ahead and highlight the appropriate code here. There we go. I'm going to execute it. I get the warning, then the green check mark. Let's go ahead and call this sucker. Call update fighter tier. Okay. Uh, I actually realized I don't know what Luigi's, I don't know what Luigi's, what's it called is, uh, his ID. So select <laughs> star from fighters. My bad, y'all. Select star from fighters. Luigi is 11. Okay. So call update fighter tier where the fighter ID is 11 and then his new tier is A and let's buff him up. So let's go, y'all. Boom. Those are our two parameters. That's our call. It executed. Let's go back to our select star from fighters. And Luigi has been buffed from B tier to A tier. We have now written a lovely little update. Update procedure in this example here. Uh, next, let's actually do something where we grab, hmm, what can we do? Let's grab the moves for a fighter. That sounds pretty good, actually. So let's go ahead and do it again. We're going to copy and paste our procedure code to save time as we're speeding up here in the process. New lines. Uh, new what's in between beginning and end. I'm going to remove my parameters, and I'm going to go ahead and change the name. We're going to call it get fighter moves. Copy, paste for simplicity. There we go. The parameters it will need will be fighter ID. So I'll say my fighter ID type int. Data type int is going to be the one parameter. It's going to run a select. We're going to say m dot move name m dot move type m dot damage as my three things I'm going to select in this statement from the moves table alias to column name m where m dot fighter underscore id equals my parameter, which is underscore fighter underscore id, semicolon, and voila. We're speeding up here, folks. That's what I'm talking about. Let's execute this sucker. Boom. And then let's call it. So we're going to call, let's get Mario's move, so that I actually know his uh, id. <laughs> let's call one, which is Mario. Execute this. Fireball. Super jump punch, cape, and the flood, which is his, you know, uh, his water thing from uh, Mario Sunshine, if you didn't know. Okay, so yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic other little procedure right here, right? Like, get all tags for a blog post, or get all mentions from a chirp or something like that, or get all chirps written by a user. Maybe we have a profile page that when a user logs in and goes to their profile, we run a query that says, get all the chirps written by the user that's logged in and display them on their profile page so they can edit or delete them as they so choose. Now, obviously, we could do a whole lot of crazy stuff. Um... When you learn some more advanced queries, you're not going to know what I'm writing here. And I will have a small lesson on the group by and having clauses. But I wanted to show you all some of the more complex things you could do with these queries. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. You can, uh, you can follow along or at this point you can just kind of chill for a second. Top tiers abg damage so clearly this is going to get the top tiers with average damage it's going to be the goal of this procedure that's going to be its name i do not need any inputs as this is going to be a complex query that just is simplified by a procedure for me i'm going to destroy what's inside of here and let's get going i'm going to call i'm going to say select the fighter's name so i'll say f fighter name i want what tier they are which will come from the fighters table I want their average damage, moves.damage. Uh, we're going to alias this column as AVG damage. There we go. Okay. That's our select statement. This is going to happen from our left hand table called fighters alias F. We're going to join the moves table alias M on the relationship of fighters, fighter ID to moves. Fighter ID as the foreign key primary key relationship between these two tables. 
I'm going to run a group by clause, which we'll talk about in a later video, which is f fighter underscore id, having f tier of s or a. We're going to define top tier as s or a tier in our case here. So that's a having and a group by. Again, you don't know what these are. It's okay. Either follow along or watch what I'm doing. Order by average damage descending. That is an awesome query and shows you how something relatively complex can be nested inside of a create procedure. And I pray this works because I didn't actually test this, but it's from my brain and my brain is generally sometimes more than often than not incorrect. So <laughs> well, there's, there's that hashtag confidence coming into play. But yeah, like I said, it's meant to kind of uh, take complex queries. Again, having to write this inside of a string in TypeScript and Node Express would be a pain, but calling a procedure is much easier. I mean, good error. Uh, call name of parameter or name of procedure plus parentheses, if any parameters, and semicolon, boom. And would you look at that? Kirby seems to have the highest average damage. So basically, what this did is it got every fighter by their name, as long as they were an S or A tier calculated the average damage of all of their moves put together, their average damage, so add them all up, divide by number of moves, made a column called average damage, and then ordered it by the highest average damage descending, which honestly, I, in the real, depending on, I mean, I guess it depends on which Super Smash Brothers game, but this is definitely not Melee, I'll tell you that. But in this dumb case I have here, Kirby is the highest average damage, and Fox, this is not true, is the lowest average damage, but nevertheless, we only have S and AT, A tier characters. So is this actually correct? Let's go find out. I'm actually curious what it, if this actually worked or it's just BSing me here. So what's, uh, what's Kirby's uh, fighter ID? It's five. So we're going to say select from moves where fighter ID equals five. And we have what? 10 plus 14 plus eight plus 10, all that is 42. 42 divided by four is indeed 10.5, which is what our sort of procedure got. So yeah, the math, I don't know why I would doubt my SQL. I'm just making sure that my query was correct. But yeah, so 10.5 is indeed the uh, the average of Kirby's moves, which all total to be 40. 42 divided by four is 10.5. So there, there you go. That is a sick stored procedure that I used here. And again, we'll talk about these, at least group by in this, uh, in this database course, this mini database uh, crash course, the introduction part of it anyway, in our full stack uh, curriculum course. But there should be, I'm working on a full, a complete database thing that will cover even more. So yeah, I'll cover this one uh, later in this, in this topic. But for now, you can just follow along and try figuring it out yourself if you have the gumption to do so. Otherwise, uh, have fun with whatever I may challenge you with in the lab. The syntax, like I said, is not bad. Matter of fact, hell, just get the query working with some plugged in values directly. So for example, uh, get this query working with a specific fighter ID like Mario. Just write in one by hand until it works. And when you get the query working as you expect, wrap it in the procedure syntax, change your hard-coded number to a parameter and replace that hard-coded number or string or whatever with your parameter. And boom, you can solve the lab. I'll probably have you all do a couple of procedures like this just to get you to write them in practice and make you, and again, keep making you practice queries because that's what databasing is all about. So I'll see y'all in whatever that lab happens to be and in whatever lecture is after that lab.